Professor Dave and Chegg here. When using line notation to depict molecules, we sometimes disregard the true geometry of the molecule by flattening it out. But if we are depicting molecules with their true geometry, substituents must be on wedge or dash bonds in order to obey the tetrahedral geometry that these sp3 centers demand. And with that, we have set the stage for an important concept, the notion of stereoisomerism and chirality. We already know what structural isomers are. These are molecules that have the same molecular formula but differing connectivity. This would be like a straight chain alkane versus a branched alkane with the same number of carbons, or even something like dimethyl ether versus ethanol, which produces different functional groups. But even when molecules have precisely the same connectivity, we can still have stereoisomerism. Stereoisomers are molecules that have the same molecular formula and the same connectivity, but differ in the way the atoms are distributed in space. Take this molecule, 2-bromobutane. This bromo group must be on either a dash bond or a wedge bond, as we know. But if we draw both options, we must understand that these are not the same molecule. They are mirror images of one another. If we take this one on the wedge bond and reflect it across this mirror plane, we get this mirror image. And if we then flip it over to the other side to try to line up the main chain, this bromo group pointing towards us will end up pointing away from us, and therefore on a dash bond, and will not line up with this first bromo group. These molecules are mirror images, just like your hands are mirror images. Your hands are not superposable. That is to say, if one hand is placed over the other with the palms facing the same direction, we can't get the fingers to line up properly. When a molecule is not superposable on its mirror image in precisely this manner, this molecule is said to be chiral. And specifically, this carbon is said to be a chiral center. There are a lot of synonyms for this term. We could say stereocenter or stereogenic center, and we'd be talking about the same thing. We would generally be talking about a carbon atom that is connected to four different groups. In this case, methyl, ethyl, bromo, hydrogen. This is the reason the mirror image is different. If we changed this ethyl to a methyl, when we get the mirror image, we would find that it is absolutely identical. This is due to the internal symmetry of the molecule. Because the mirror image is identical, this molecule is not chiral, which we can also call achiral. It will be very important to be able to identify chiral centers. Take a look at this molecule. Take a moment and see if you can identify all the chiral centers. Bear in mind that sp and sp2 hybridized carbons will not qualify. We are almost always talking about sp3 carbons when referring to chiral centers. Also remember that hydrogen atoms bound to carbon are implied and not shown, so we must keep these in mind as well when considering the four groups bound to any carbon. Are you ready? Here are all the chiral centers in this molecule, marked with an asterisk. Each of the four groups bound to these carbons is different, either different elements or different kinds of carbon chains that are not precisely identical. We must be able to do this with any organic molecule. So we should now understand what is meant by the term chiral, as well as a chiral center on a molecule, and be able to identify such chiral centers on any molecule. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.